Hi, my name is Wayne Blakely from Coming Out Ministries. There actually wasn't a day in my life that I didn't know same-sex attraction. My natural mother um, didn't want anything but to have a baby girl. So when I was born, she was very disappointed and, and she was angry. And before I was two years old, she broke my arm in two different places. My father was in the Air Force Base and uh, was gone most of the time. And so one day he came home and found my arm in a cast and realized that there was abuse that was taking place. And, reached out to his, his uh, sisters and, and to his brother and said, hey, can somebody help me out here and take Wayne? Well, to make a very long story shorter, uh, my aunt and uncle adopted me. My aunt and uncle being um, very strong Christians, raised me with the belief in Jesus, sent me to Christian schools, uh, went to church, worked in a Christian organization, and yet the same-sex attraction didn't go away. Not only that, we didn't talk about it. We didn't talk about it in school. We didn't talk about it in church. I was teased. I was harassed. I was bullied. I even had classmates that looked like me, or a classmate that looked like me, uh, that would get beat up on his way home from school. I only found this out a couple of years ago. So did God abandon me? It sure seemed like it. It didn't seem like he heard my prayers, and my prayers were that, please, God, make me straight. But you know, God doesn't, doesn't um, do things that, that aren't going to be good for us. And, and the fact is, is that it wasn't about him wanting to make me straight. What he really wanted was to have an intimate relationship with me where I would learn more about him, that I would fall in love with him, and that I would want to deny myself for him. But I didn't find that. I didn't find that in the church or the church schools. And so at the age of 18, um, I left God and I left the church and for almost 40 years I spent my life in the gay culture. I partied, um, I looked for the right man, I even entered male prostitution for 12 years. Um, I was arrested, I was convicted and it's still today on my arrest record um, for life. But there came a time in my life um, and I say this because God never gives up on us, and the power of prayer is incredible. So for parents and for loved ones who are, who are praying for someone who is stuck in the gay culture, don't give up, because the prayers, of my, the prayers of my parents that went on for nearly 40 years, one day God brought the host of heaven and the Holy Spirit to my aid as I sat and contemplated the fact that all of my friends are dead. That's like 40 close friends and over 100 acquaintances. They had all died from AIDS. And yet I was the person who should have been dead. I should um, have been infected with HIV from all the promiscuous sex that I had had in my life. And yet somehow God had managed to, to preserve me knowing that I would respond to Him, that I would hear His call, and that I got the lightning bolt experience from him in this and that I realized I didn't have the right to blame him for something that wasn't his fault but it was the fault of Satan himself. Satan had deceived me through feelings, the same thing he did to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. It wasn't the truth. Um, it, they knew what the truth was, but they caved into their feelings and to the fact that Satan was telling them that the, the fruit was delicious and that they would gain knowledge. And, and yet God had told them that knowledge and the tasting of that fruit would end in, in sure death. And of course it did. So today, um, I find that, that I have listened to, to what God has asked of me. I, I came to that point in my life where I listened to his promptings and, and when he spoke to me and said, Wayne, you, you don't have an intimate relationship with me. In fact, you don't know enough about me to even blame me for what you're blaming me. And he asked me to begin to search his word and to begin to study um, all those references to homosexuality. And not only that, but Paul's writings about the fact that, that these people won't be in heaven along with a host of other sinners. But then that 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 11 tells me such were some of you because you were washed and you were sanctified. And I knew that healing was possible when I read that. Um, I know this is a lot in a short period of time, but I just want to assure you that if you're looking for a way out of homosexuality or if you know someone who's gay, um, you don't have to remain that way. 
and you can learn to come to live in agreement with Jesus. It's a trust relationship. It's a walk with God. It's a curing process. It doesn't happen all at once. Am I still tempted? Well, to any viewer who's watching this, are you? You see, it's not about the fact that I'm tempted. It's about what am I doing with my temptations? And so today, when I'm tempted, I surrender and I give them over to Jesus Christ rather than living by the flesh. And that's what Paul has called me to. That's the word of God um, that has called me to, to be in agreement with him. And today, I live as 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, that he um, will take my past and forget it if I will repent of it, and that he promise me, promises me to be a new creation in Jesus Christ. And so that's who I am today. It took me more than five minutes to get into this. It's likely to take me four, more than five minutes to get out of it. It's about a continued, intimate, plugged-in relationship with Jesus Christ every moment of every day. And so I challenge you to um, surrender yourself, to have a moment with God where you say, you know what, I belong to you. I, I am all yours and I'm giving myself to you. I need to be led by the Holy Spirit to show me what to do next. And so, God bless you.